So yeah, I'm, I'm the owner of Prashant Advanced Survey LLP. Uh, we are one of the top companies in India uh, who are doing all types of advanced mobile mapping solutions and LiDAR using the LiDAR technologies. Yeah. OK, thank you. The next slide. So the agenda for today's presentation would be like about Prashant Surveys, about the LiDAR technology, about data captured by the LiDAR Pegasus 2 instrument which we are owning, LiDAR data processing methodologies and the softwares used for generating the outputs, use of LiDAR technology for the highway and railway projects, case study of LiDAR survey for the Vishakhapatnam Defense Airport, the case study of mobile LiDAR survey in Saudi Arabia, which was the first international project we did, GNSS, DGPS, or course network, and then contact us. Next slide. OK, about us, uh, I'll be fast on this so that we gain some time for the technology part. We are a 32 years old company, professional land and mapping company based in India. We use the state of the art advanced technologies, as I already told you, the LiDAR surveys. We offer cost effective solution to the government, semi government, private industry in India as well as abroad. The next slide. So, about me, uh, like Prashant, our team, I'm the owner. My father, Shivananda Radhi, he was in central government for 24 years, and he's having an experience of 52 years. So his age is 72 years, by the way. <laughs> so he's still with me, and his friend, and she's my wife, Deepa Radhi. She's also a partner, co-partner. So about me, it's already mentioned. Uh, I've done my BE civil graduation from in 1999 from uh, Pune, and after 13 years did my post-graduation, Masters of Civil Engineering, uh, stood first in college, second in University of Pune, got a gold medal there. And presently, I'm doing a PhD in advanced surveying. This is my last year. And I was a speaker in 28 international conferences worldwide on LiDAR, LiDAR technology. This is my 29th conference. So I'm specializing in 3D mobile mapping, backpack, LiDAR solutions, drones, to name a few. OK, uh, I already told you 32 years old company. We have successfully completed about 35,000 kilometers of highway surveys. 3,000 kilometers of railways and two major defense airports in India, which are highly restricted. Completed more than 100 kilometers of prestigious surveys projects till now. Okay, uh, yeah. Uh, I told you my uh, father, he's the founder, and myself is there. We are the first in India to have the Leica Pegasus 1 system in India. That was in way back in 2015. And of course, we were again the first in India to have the Leica total session in 1998. And I graduated my civil engineering in 1999. So before my graduation, we already have a, had a total session that time. So of course, now we are into uh, drones as well. So we have got uh, industry's best uh, Matrix 350 RTK with Zenmu's L2 LiDAR. And of course, uh, always, I mean, uh, we are into all types of technologies like you know backpack, uh, drones, as well as the mobile mapping, I told you. So this is what we are having, existing infrastructure, owning two numbers of Leica Pegasus 2 systems, DGPS receivers, drones, backpacks, and a lot of other stuff also. This is the hardware part, or you can say the software part. And uh, you can see the processors. And uh, of course, without the processors and workstation, uh, nothing is possible. This is a list of uh, services which we provide. OK, this is the list of uh, where I was a speaker in international conferences. So these are 28. OK, so now after the brief introduction about our company, I'm back to the technology now. That's the second chapter. Mobile LiDAR is an advanced mapping solution used to collect survey grade 3 point cloud data along the motorable roads high and highways quickly and accurately. Incorporates the most advanced LiDAR sensors, cameras, including 360 degrees camera views, position, GNSS, GPS receivers, as the, and the IMU as well. IMU stands for the Inertial Measurement Unit. So output after processing include the georeference 3D point cloud data, 3D maps in AutoCAD or drawing files or ArcGIS shape files, as well as the payment distress of the images and the videos. So this is about our backpack. We recently procured our backpack, I told you. This is uh, our backpack Genus Explore, which can be carried out on shoulders and used for kinematic laser scans by walk or by on a bike. Backpack ladder can be used for static scans of narrow lanes, heritage buildings, under the bridges, and areas where vehicle-mounted mobile mapping is not possible. Handheld radar can also be carried out by the hands, uh, for used for kinematic scans by walk, mainly for creating the BIM 
or interior models of the building interiors. So this we have procured from Omnisphere, who also have a stand here, and he's a friend of mine. So now I told you we have a DGI Matrix 350 RTK with Zenmus L2 laser scanner and with the RGB camera, which is the best in uh, industry as on date for uh, LiDAR-based mapping or drone-based mapping. This can be used for uh, mapping greenfield alignments, cities, hilly terrains, and areas where mobile mapping and backpack surveys will not be sufficient at all. OK, so the Leica Pegasus 2, which we procured eight years back. So it basically, what does it capture? 3D point cloud data in 360 degrees using the Z plus F9012 scanner, which is a laser profiler. High resolution photographs in all direction, and the trajectory or the GNSS or the IMU information. So about that can be captured for about 80 to 100 kilometers per day, depending on the road conditions. Base station data, of course, logistic planning, and the absolute accuracy is plus minus 5 centimeters, which we get. The precision of ZNF profiler is, however, less than 1 millimeter. So what is the workflow for this? So the, we put the data in uh, the Waypoint Industrial Explorer for trajectory, for creating the accurate trajectory. Then it goes into Leica Auto P for point cloud registration. Then it comes into Map Factory RGS for feature extraction of point line polygon features for all the roadside features and amenities. Then it goes into 3D reshaper for creating the dam and the contours. And of course, it is then brought into RGS, AutoCAD, or MX Excel for drawing data display. So you use a complete suite of uh, uh, you know, softwares. It's not uh, just single software like AutoCAD. And like total session, it was earlier. Just collect the data, put in AutoCAD, and the output is out. So it's not like that. You have to use a workflow, a comprehensive workflow. And the raw data which is captured is pretty high. It's one GB of data for one kilometer of mobile mapping, because the laser scanner scans at the rate of 1 million points per second. So it's a pretty huge data to handle. OK, next slide. So this is a screenshot of the urban area, how the point cloud looks like, if you are aware of what the point cloud is, says. So this is a screenshot of a village area where the point cloud is visible. And the same, you have the camera data as well. You have uh, left-hand side, it's the camera data, and the right-hand side is the point cloud data of the same building. It's, we use the like a map factory. This is a map factory software. This is a trajectory processing module, wherein everything is in green. That means the trajectory has been processed accurately as per the survey standards and survey grade. So if you have something which is not processed properly, it will show you in orange or the red color. So here, everything has been processed. And this is the backbone of the any mobile mapping. The trajectory is the most important thing. People are confused between like, uh, the you know uh, point cloud data, you, you cannot know what the accuracy is, but the trajectory tells you what how much accurate your data is. So that's the backbone of any mobile mapping surveying. So this is um, a screenshot of how the feature extraction is done. Uh, we are having about 100, about 110 layers. Uh, yeah, we are up to 110 layers, which I've just zoomed in. You can imagine the intensity of uh, uh, the features which you can see here. All the buildings, electric poles, telephone poles, trees. So a lot of features are there. Uh, for a typical urban mapping uh, solution, you have about um, uh, you know, uh, point, and line, point line polygon features. So a lot of features are there. About 100 layers are there. Now I'm coming to this uh, railway projects, where we are mounted on Leica Pegasus 2 on the tower wagon. Uh, this wagon is dedicated for us for data capture. And uh, it, uh, there are station blocks between station A and station B, where there's no traffic running. And only this tower wagon is running with our Pegasus 2, and we capture the data. The speed of the survey will be about 25 to 40 kilometers per hour, approximately. So when the, you don't have the tower wagon, you go again like the old school method. You have the motorized trolley, which is quite interesting. Its uh, power is generated by the, um, uh, you know, a small um, power uh, or the Honda, this thing, uh, backup uh, DG. And then you mount it, and everything is set. You have three or four people sitting capacity. And this goes at a speed of 20 to 25 kilometers per hour, which is not bad. So in one hour, you can complete about 25 kilometers. So if you get a block of 20, two hours, you can do 50 kilometers. So we have also got a block of four hours where we did 110 kilometers. So average, we get about 50 kilometers output in per day using this. So not bad at all. So this is the feature extraction, how it is done in the point cloud data. You can see the lines which are feature extracted. And now we are including the topo dot also in the processing family. So we are using topo dot for uh, feature extraction of the uh, semi-automated feature extraction of the railway projects. 
So this is how the output looks like once it is done, the feature extraction. It's having x, y, and z coordinates as well. So there are challenges. Uh, like Now, use, use of LIDAR technology for highway, railways, and airport projects. What are the advantages? The mobile LIDAR survey is very fast. Since 100 to 50, 50 to 100 kilometers, highways, railway alignment can be captured per day based on the traffic and the site conditions. We can capture dense point cloud data, like 1 million points per second using the mobile mapping. The data captured by mobile data also gives 360 degree panoramic of the street views. Mostly automated, hence less chance of a human error. Airport runway can be captured within a few minutes without any major interruption to the traffic. Very effective in creating 3D digital HD GIS maps. Now, I come to the uh, case studies of the Vishakhapatnam Air Airport. The name of the project was Topographic Survey for Resurfacing of the Runway, Taxiways, and Development of Associated Infrastructure at Vishakhapatnam Airport, which is a high secure de uh, defense airport. The second one was in Jammu and Kashmir, which is again a defense airport. Total length was 5.6 kilometers of runways and taxiways. The period for site data capture was only 30 minutes. So within takeoff and landing of flights, we were allowed to do the uh, survey, and we completed the survey within 20 minutes. So mobile radar instrument used was Leica Pegasus 2. The scanner was Z plus M9012 profiler. Base stations were Leica GS14. And the accuracy of the data was absolute accuracy was plus minus one centimeter, mine well. So deliverables were the soft copy of topographic survey map, 3D plan in AutoCAD or drawing files, shape files, showing all the existing roadside point line polygon features. Soft copies of registered 3D point cloud data in HPC or LAS format. HPC stands for hexagon point cloud format. That's a uh, Leica's patented format. And the DIN, uh, DTM tins contours cross section at every five meter for the width of the runway. Soft copies of all the above data, runway condition, distress data, KML file of the taxiway and the runways. So this is how it looks on uh, Google Earth. Uh, this is the, these are two crisscrossing um, runways. One is for the commercial flights, and one is for the defense purpose. So this is a point cloud data, a screenshot of the point cloud data. Again, the same. Uh, you have the camera data on the left-hand side and the point cloud data on the right-hand side. So with this, you can imagine how, the, uh, how, 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 it's, how smooth the road is as all the surface is. And even in this, you have to generate millimeters or one centimeter accuracy. It's a real challenge. So the second case study is like uh, the topography survey for uh, carried by Pegasus 2 for um, about 650 kilometer length uh, in Qasim Hail or Jof Highway in Saudi Arabia, which is Highway 65. Total length was 650 kilometers in Saudi Arabia, which was captured only in 11 days. Here we could successfully do uh, high speed data capture. Of course, it was um, uh, 12 lanes of highways. So be prepared with that in mind. The time, time period for data delivery was two months. Pegasus 2, again the same scanner, same uh, base station receiver. Absolute accuracy here plus minus five centimeters. Of course, now we are using the CORS, C-O-R-S, that's continuously operating reference station in India, which has been just recently started a couple of years back. Uh, this is quite interesting because we used to set up our base stations before this, because we are doing mobile mapping since uh, eight years. And uh, without the coast network, we used to have establish our own base stations and then do GCPs and then do the control points and then do the ma mobile mapping. But by using the coast network, the work of the GCPs and the base stations has been a little bit you know, relaxed. So uh, the previous slide. So the imp important thing is that uh, we use uh, CORS or GCPs. But the main thing is that the course or the base stations are the most important backbone of any project. So if you have proper DGP, uh, DGPS and the control points, that means the trajectory is processed accurately, and then your point cloud data fits in accurately, and then you have the desired accuracy levels. So this is very important. So these are typically the base station which we used to establish earlier when the coast network was not there. And you can see a variety of uh, uh, possibilities. OK, and I end my presentation here uh, with a word of thanks. And any questions, I'm open to any questions. I'm open to any questions now.